Senior Plasma Physics, Lecture 6. Now that we've been introduced to the fluid equations, let's look at some applications. In this lecture, we'll look at drift velocity in a similar way that we did for the single particle motion, except now it's the drift velocities in a fluid. In particular, we'll look at drift velocities both perpendicular and parallel to a magnetic field. Let's start by recalling the fluid equations. There were two equations, the continuity equation and the momentum equation, also sometimes called the force equation or just the equation of motion. In plasma physics, we find it more convenient to deal with number densities, so we convert the mass density rho into number density n by multiplying n by the mass of each particle m. So now the two equations become these. We can think of a plasma as consisting of two interpenetrating fluids, an electron and an ion fluid. So rather than there being two fluid equations, there are actually four. Here, we've placed the subscript alpha to indicate whether the two equations are for ions or for electrons. Let's apply the momentum equation to find the drift in a perpendicular direction to a magnetic field. So here we have a cylindrically symmetric plasma where the magnetic field B is along the Z direction, which is the axis of symmetry of the plasma. We also have a pressure gradient, which is highest at the center and becomes less as one moves out radially. So the vector of this gradient points towards the center. Now let's assume that we're really only interested in the perpendicular velocities to the magnetic field. We'll symbolize it here by V perp. For the sake of simplicity, we'll assume that V perp is very slow compared to the cyclotron motion of the particle. That means we can assume that there is very little change in V perp as a function of time, and we can set the rate of change to zero. It also means that since V perp is small, then the convective term given by this in the momentum equation is also very small because it's a second order term in velocity. If V perp is small, then the convective term is very small and so can be ignored. We're now in a position to simplify the momentum equation. From these two assumptions, we see that the left hand side goes to zero, which simplifies to this. In order to solve for V perp in a simple way, we'll take the cross product of both sides with the magnetic field. We notice that this vector triple product can be simplified by making use of a vector identity that you can find in every vector calculus book. In this case, it simplifies to this. Notice that the dot product between V perp and the magnetic field must be zero because they are at right angles to each other. So now this expression simplifies to this. We can say that the perpendicular drift velocity consists of two components labeled here as VE and VD, where VE is the E cross B term that we came across when we were looking at the single particle motion. However, this time, there is an additional term that we did not see in the single particle approach. We'll find out what this term means shortly. For the moment, we'll call it the diamagnetic drift term. Remember that we are dealing with a two fluid model. So in this case, there should be two diamagnetic drift velocities one for the electron and one for the ion. Notice that the diamagnetic drift term relies on charge. Notice that the cross product between grad P and B is shown in this diagram, where the electron drift velocity is along the azimuthal direction and is running counterclockwise, while the ion drift velocity is again in the azimuthal direction but is running clockwise. If you use some kind of hand rule to work out the magnetic field, generated by these drifting charges, you'll notice that they generate their own field in the opposite direction to the applied field, thus the term diamagnetic drift. Let's now look at the drift velocity parallel to the magnetic field. If we consider motion only along the z direction, then the momentum equation simplifies to this, where all the terms along the z direction. Again, here we assume that V is slow enough to ignore, so the second order term 
the so-called convective term disappears, but V is still fast enough not to ignore the DV DT term. This is not entirely unreasonable, since in a plasma, particles will drift much faster along a magnetic field than at right angles to it. We also need to evaluate the gradient in pressure, dp dz, by making use of the equation of state for an ideal gas, given by this, where c is a constant, n is the number density, and gamma is the ratio of the specific heats for constant pressure and volume. Now let's differentiate both sides of the equation so that we can have an expression for dp dz. Let's now divide both sides by the equation of state, that is, divide the left by p, and the right side by cn to the power of gamma. We now substitute the expression for pressure from the ideal gas law, p equals nkt. We find that dp dz becomes this expression. So now we substitute this back into the momentum equation, which results in this equation. In the absence of any drift, that is, vz goes to zero, we end up with this equation. Note that the electric field EZ is given by the gradient of the electric potential, phi. We substitute this back into the equation above, and we assume for simplicity that the gamma for a fully ionized plasma is 1. We end up with this differential equation. Now integrate both sides to get this, and rearrange this expression to get this. This is known as the Boltzmann relation, and is used widely in plasma physics. Note that it is not called the Boltzmann equation. That is an entirely different equation. 